Hey, how's it going, Saxon Felines? My name is MCIK or my kind of Kia. Welcome everybody back to another Warframe video. Today, we are going to be talking about all of the new passives in Warframe that were added to all the frames. I'm going to be talking a little bit about all of them, going over all of them, telling you guys what they do basically if, you, if it wasn't you know, explained well enough. If you guys are like, mm, I kind of understand it, but I don't fully understand it, I'm going to go into depth and talk about the new passives. So yeah, I hope you guys do enjoy the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys are having an awesome day. And yeah, without further ado, let's go down the list with all the Warframes and all of their passives. So if you guys don't know what passives are, it's kind of like their mini abilities. Each one has their own unique passive, and it's their unique little ability, little trait that they have. It does different things depending on which frame it is. You know, it, it's very minor things. It's not big, major things, but uh, it helps. First off down the list, we have Ash. So Ash's passive is bleeding effects are inflicted onto enemies. They do more damage and last a lot longer. So what bleed effects are is basically like slash damage. When an enemy starts to bleed out, um, these effects are going to last a lot longer and they're going to do a lot more damage. And the good thing is a lot of his abilities are relying basically a lot on bleed damage. Shuriken is a great example of that and so is Bladestorm. Moving on to Atlas. This is one of my favorites in, in my opinion. It kind of it kind of very suitable for Atlas. Anyway, uh, he becomes immune to knockdown effects while on the ground. So if his two feet are on the ground, he will not take knockdown damage. Which I think that's that's freaking amazing. So keep in mind though, if he's in, he's, if he's airborne and there's an AOE of knockdown in the area, he will still get he will get knocked down unless he has both feet planted on the ground firm. Moving on to Banshee. This is a very nice one in my opinion. Anyway, so Banshee's passive is weapon noises are hushed so that enemies cannot hear them. So basically any weapon that you use with Banshee is instantaneously a silent weapon. No matter what weapon it is, it's a silent weapon. And I think that's a great ability. That means you can run with automatic, fully automatic, and still do stealth runs. That's freaking amazing. So I really have to say thank you for DE for that passive. I think that's great. And it definitely helps her for stealthing because, you know, as you guys know, I talked about it in Honest Opinions. She's a very squishy frame, so you gotta be stealthy with her or use your abilities wisely. So I think that's great that they added this passive. Okay, so as for Chroma, this is gonna be sort of the same one as he's been for a while, but I'll just go over it again. Choose an en the choosing energy color dictates the type of element damage dealt by the abilities. As you guys already know, uh, this is an already an old one they already had. Some of them they added new ones for the ones they didn't have yet, but uh, I'm just gonna go over all of them for the new players and the ones that haven't seen any of the uh, the passive yet. So basically. Whatever whatever color scheme you choose for your energy, in you know when you're in your appearance, that is the type of element you'll be given out when you're dealing damage from your abilities. Okay, moving on to Ember and Ember Prime. So for Ember's passive, she deals more damage and regenerates energy while on fire. So it's kind of nice now. She actually can. It's okay if she's on fire. You know, before that, even though it was kind of weird though, even though she was a fire frame, she still could die from fire damage, which I thought was kind of funny. So now she deals more damage, and she gets energy while on fire. So I think that's awesome. So it's kind of like she, that is her environment, you know. That is her natural habitat now. I like that. So it's kind of good to be on fire. Moving on to Equinox. She is an amazing frame, and her passive is fantastic. So I like how they uh, they, uh, they added a little bit of yin-yang in this, because, you know, of course she's a yin-yang frame. Anyway, so health orbs. When you pick up health orbs, they will also give you a little bit of energy. And when you pick up energy orbs, it will also give you a little bit of health. So if you're in a pinch and you need energy, you can get health orbs, and those will actually give you energy. Or if you need health, you can pick up, you can pick up energy orbs, and it will give you a little bit of health. So I think that's awesome. It's kind of like it's very balanced, you know. You don't have to worry about picking certain things up. It's very equal, you know. Equinox. That's I, I get where they're getting at. I know, which, I know where you're getting at here, D. I get it. I like it. I'm loving it, okay. Da -da 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 -da. So we're moving on now to Excalibur. And when he was first created, he was meant to be a swordsman, you know. Of course, all of his abilities use a sword. And this passive is really pounding that down, and it's driving it home. So what what happens here with this passive is if Excalibur uses a sword or a melee, whatever it may be, it has increased damage, and it attacks much faster. So I think that's awesome. So he it's it kind of gives you an, uh, an excuse to use melee much more often than usual with Excalibur. Especially with his Exalted Blade. It's going to deal much faster. It's going to go much faster and deal much more damage. Moving on to Frost. Frost's passive is very simple and to the point. If an enemy is attacking Frost with a melee attack, uh, the attacker may have a chance to freeze. Freeze completely and stay frozen there. And you, of course, you can come back around and slice it back and knock it and shatter it into pieces. So I think that's a great ability. Uh, I think it's about 50-50 chance. It's not 100% all the time, but uh, it's nice. 
it's good for those butchers in the void. Because, I mean, if you get if you let them get a, a direct attack on you, you are fucked. All right, I went over this in the Hydroid BOTW. But anyway, Hydroid's passive is when you use a melee and you use slam attacks on the ground, you have a chance to summon a tentacle. It's kind of like tentacle swarm, only it's a single tentacle, and you have a chance to spawn it wherever you uh, hit the slam attack at. All right, moving on to Anaros. You guys already know this one because he was made with the passive, but I'll go over it one more time. So when Anaros goes down, when he's bleeding out, he becomes entombed in a protective sarcophagus. And he can revive himself by draining the life force from nearby enemies and allies. So if an enemy or an ally is nearby, if you just put your crosshairs on them, it will start draining their health and giving you enough health. Once you get enough health, you can come out of the sarcophagus and uh, continue raping shit. So I think that's awesome. It kind of makes them a tank, honestly. Now, I'm not 100% sure on this one, but I'm pretty sure because a friend told me about this. And I think this is, it sounds accurate. Anyway, so Ivara, so for her passive, it says you can sense nearby enemies. And now what this means is I'm almost 100% sure is that enemies nearby go on the radar for her. Even if they can't be on the radar, they will go on the radar no matter what for her. And they will show up as red little blimps. So I think that's great because she is a huntress. You know, she's a hunter. So uh, I think that's good that she can see enemies close enough to her on her minimap. Limbo, limbo, limbo. Okay, so for Limbo's passive is increased movement speed and reload and holster speed while in the rift. So if you're in the rift from rift walk or cataclysm, um, you will have increased movement speed, which is awesome. I love to be able to move fast in the void or in the rift in this case. And you can holster, which means you can switch out from your weapons much faster from your secondary melee to uh, primary while in the rift. Moving on to Loki and Loki Prime. So for his passive, he has a longer duration. He's able to stick on the wall for a longer period of time from a wall hang. I think that's pretty good. I mean, like, they could have done something a little better with this. Some people maybe might say that's, that's pretty good, but I don't know. It's all right. It's not bad. I mean, it's good to stay on the wall longer, but eh, I don't know. It's an all right passive. I guess Loki's pretty overpowered as it is, so they kind of had to make it an all right passive. Because, nah, <laughs> you know, he's, he's pretty damn good as it is. All right, moving on to Mag and Mag Prime. So for her passive is actually very helpful. It kind of is a bit of pull uh, implemented into a bullet jump. So when you bullet jump, you pull nearby items in. So I think that's really helpful. So it, it is actually very nice. I'm not sure how far the radius is out. I'm not sure. I don't think it's too far out. And I don't know if it scales with range. I don't think it does. But still, it's very nice. You know, if there's items nearby, you don't have carry with you with vacuum. It's nice to just bullet jump a little bit and just go around and Pick, pick items up much easier than running around the entire battlefield. Moving on to Mesa. Mesa's passive is a little bit derpy. That's kind of funny, though. But it's actually, it's actually it's very nice. It's very, very nice. So anyway, so when you're using a dual-wielded sidearms, you can shoot much faster than you usually could. I think that's very nice. So it kind of gives you, you know, an option. It makes you want to use sidearms more. And when you're using a single-handed sidearm, you, re you reload much faster as well. Also, you gain bonus health when you're not using melee weapons. I think that's a little funny. Like they're they're like, no, don't fucking use melee, okay? You use a mesa, don't use melee. Like they're really driving it home, man. All right, moving on to Mirage. This is the one that you guys already know. I'm sure you guys can probably tell whenever you whenever you evade and get out of the way, she evades a lot faster, and that's because her passive is the faster bullet jump and acrobat maneuvers. So she can move around the battlefield a lot faster. So I think that's very nice. It makes her very limber frame, and yeah. Moving on to another one of my favorite ones, Necros. Necros' passive is he gets a little bit of health every time an enemy nearby him dies. So that's awesome. I think that's really cool. It can really keep him alive. It kind of it kind of helps him out with his survivability in like you know T4 survivals. When enemies are getting killed quite a bit around him, he's gonna keep getting health, so he won't have to worry about dying. I think that's awesome. All right, moving on to Neza. You guys already know about hers. She can slide much faster and go further. I don't need to talk anymore on that. I'm sure you guys have already known that you already realized that while using her. She slides like a motherfucker, but I think it's really funny and uh, it's very nice. Okay, moving on to Nova. Nova has a very unique one. Nova and Nova Prime. So when knocked over, like when you're knocked on your off your feet and onto the ground, you will disperse sort of a defensive burst that topples enemies nearby. So when you're knocked down, it'll knock down other enemies nearby. So I think that's that's really nice. It's kind of evens the playing around, you know? So let's say in this case, a good example would be if an ancient healer in the void uh, comes at you and, you know, charges you and knocks you to the ground, he also will be knocked to the ground as well. So 
kind of gives you time to get back up and kill him before he kills you. So I think that's a nice little ability. Moving on to Nyx and Nyx Prime. Another really awesome passive. So uh, any enemies affected by Nyx's abilities may suddenly choose to lay down their arms. Basically meaning sort of like Radial Disarm. Whenever you're affected by Radial Disarm, you lay down your weapon and you pick up the little stick. So it's a 50-50 chance. So, I mean, if you activate Chaos and about 50, 50 enemies nearby, that's pretty freaking awesome. 25 of them are going to be completely removed of all their weapons. Okay, this is a really cool one. I like this one. So moving on to Oberon. His passive is sort of a bit with nature, if you, if you guys kind of didn't guess that already. Because, uh, of course, he was he was founded on Earth, you know, along with the Tether's Doom mods and all that good stuff. But uh, anyway, nearby wildlife will fight alongside Oberon. So that that's pretty cool. If you go onto Earth and you go into near a Kubro den, all of those Kubros will become your friend. They'll fight for you and they'll attack the Grenier and not attack you. I think that's really freaking awesome. I feel like they got a little bit la lazy on rhinos. They kind of just threw on a mod and put it inside of his passive ability. But basically, it's heavy impact. All right, so for, for Rhino and Rhino Prime, so basically his passive is after landing from a really high jump and landing on the ground, it sends out a shockwave and knocks a lot of enemies down on their feet. But this is basically a mod already. It's heavy impact, so I don't know. I think it's all right. It's not bad. I, I, it's, it's not a terrible one. I mean, I guess he's a really thick frame, so I guess it makes sense. You know, when he falls down, he just shakes the whole earth. So it's not a bad ability. It's not a bad passive. So as for Saren's passive and Saren Prime's passive, the status effects inflicted upon enemies last much longer than they did before. And this is really helpful because, as you guys know, Miasma really is only useful whenever the enemy that it's, it's activated on has a poison proc on them already or a viral or any of the above. So it's really good that they last the effects last much longer now on these enemies so that way you can take your time and then use miasma whenever you need to all right moving on to trinity trinity got nerfed in my opinion a little bit ago and i'm kind of sad about it but the passive isn't terrible so you can revive fallen enemies faster and further away uh, i think that's all right i tested it out it's really not that much further away you really can't go that much further away i was thinking it was gonna be like a lot further away but Eh, it's about one foot much <laughs> one foot further I think the faster revive speed though is very nice So I have to say thank you very much D for that. That's very nice. Ah Good old Valkyr rest in peace Anyway, so passive for Valkyr is she has a faster recovery from being knocked down Yeah, that's about it. Thanks for D. Thank you so much for caring about our favorite frame Thank you for nerfing her. Thank you for the passive. That is amazing. So moving on to Voban and Voban Prime so for their passive, uh, you get armor increase with each nearby ally. So with every nearby ally, you get a percentage of armor increase. If you have all three nearby, it is quite a bit of armor. And it kind of makes him more of a buff frame. He isn't like a squishy frame, but the armor is super helpful in late game. So Volt's passive ability is, it says, Grounded movements generates an electric charge that is unleashed with the next attack. Basically what this means is, the longer you walk on the ground, it builds up a little counter at the top right of your screen and uh, the more you walk the more damage you build up and that is going to be all charged up for one last blow the next time you choose to attack it'll blow out all of that damage electro electrical damage onto an enemy so it's very nice it's not a lot of damage but it's still very helpful moving on to wukong wukong's passive ability is great for his primal fury so it is increased combo duration time like he has a longer duration for his combo so that means you're going to be able to build that combo quite a bit up whenever you're using Primal Fury. So I think that's awesome. So you're going to deal a lot more damage when you get that combo going up. And it's going to stay up there for quite a while too. And last but not least, Zephyr. So as you guys already know with Zephyr, her passive is basically she she has increased agility while airborne and she falls much slower like a little leaf falling from the sky. Alright guys, that is about it. Those are all of the passive abilities, the, the, the new and the old, the bad and the ugly. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think of the new passives. Let me know what you guys think about the uh, how they work with the new frames, if you've tried them out already. I think they're really nice. I think they're, they're a nice little addition to all of the frames. Gives them their little special touch. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Man, my voice is getting a little raspy. I've been talking a lot today. I've been recording quite a few videos, trying to get ahead for London here soon. But uh, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching the video. I'll see you guys all for tomorrow's video. Leave a comment for what video you guys want me to do next. And uh, yeah, who knows, I might do it, but uh, only time can tell. Anyway, have an awesome day. If you guys are new to the channel, subscribe today to join the feline pack. That would be amazing. Have an awesome day. My name is MCIK, and I'll see you sexy felines for the next video. 
Stay cool and peace out.